Let's look at a couple of applications that involve the ideal gas law. One common application is to use it to experimentally determine the molar mass of a gas. So for example, let's say you have 15 grams of a gas. And say it's in a two liter container at 291 Kelvin, and it exerts a pressure of 1.3 atmospheres. Using that information, we should be able to come up with the molar mass. <clears throat> now, anytime you're working with a gas, and you're dealing with pressures and volumes. Right? <clears throat> For problems like this, it's always a good idea to start with PV and equal NRT. Because you probably need to use the ideal gas law somewhere in the problem. So you compare what we've got to what's in the ideal gas law. We're given a pressure, we're given a volume. We're given R, and we're given a temperature. Now remember, R is a, the gas constant. It's always given. The thing we don't have is N, the number of moles. So how can we use the number of moles to figure out molar mass? Well, remember, molar mass is grams per mole. We're given the mass of our gas. So if we can figure out how many moles of gas we have, we can divide the two and get our molar mass. So solving for N, plug in everything we have. Again, R is a given value is 0 0.08206 atmosphere liter over mole Kelvin. And temperature is 291. Once again, we see that with these units, everything cancels out except the unit we're looking for. So that gives us 0 0.109 moles of gas. So if the mass is 15 grams, and under those conditions we calculate that we have 0 0.109 moles of that gas, you divide the two and that gives you 138 grams per mole. Another application of the ideal gas law is we can use it to calculate the density of a gas. So for example, let's say we want to find the density of methane, which is CH4, at one atmosphere pressure and a temperature of 278 Kelvin. And we'll find our density in units of grams per liter. So once again, we start with the ideal gas law. Right, we're given a pressure. R is a constant, that's given. We're given a temperature. But we actually have two unknowns at this point. <clears throat> we're not given a volume or an amount. So at first, it, you may think that we're not going to be able to use the ideal gas law. Because typically, you know, we have three of our four variables and we solve for the fourth. But we are given the identity of the gas. And if you look at the periodic table, add up the atomic weights, you get a molar mass of 16 grams 
per mole. In other words, one mole of methane has a mass of 16.04 grams. So we know the mass of one mole. Let's find the volume of one mole of gas. So go ahead and plug everything in once again. So solve them for V, that's what we have. And, oops. Oops, leader doesn't cancel out yet. So everything cancels out except the leader unit. So the units look okay. So that gives us a volume of 22.8 liters. So now we've got the mass of one mole of gas. We've got the volume of that amount. So if 16.04 grams has a volume of 22.8 liters, it gives you a density of 0.704 grams per liter.